Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James and I am going to talk about the Super Mario Brother film, the 2023 animated film. I talked about the 1993 film a little while ago and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of those two movies for you in the coming days as well. I saw the Super Mario Brother movie and I must tell you that I absolutely loved this film from start to finish. Let's go! Uh, yes. uh. If you're looking at the critic reviews of this movie, don't look at the audience score. It is much higher on Rotten Tomatoes than the critic rev reviews. And you want to know why. You're wondering why is this the case. And I don't know what critics are watching. I watched this movie. I went into it expecting Super Mario Brothers. And what I got was Super Mario Brothers. It has cameos. And it has Easter eggs aplenty from Duck Hunt to Punch Out to Donkey Kong, Wrecking Crew. Mario Brothers is at the forefront of it all. All 35 plus years, almost 40 years of Mario Brothers, or 40 years, I guess, with Donkey Kong, is included in this movie. And so for like the older fans like myself who've been playing Mario Brothers since day one, basically. There is so much in there for you to watch and enjoy. It's got some humor to it, too. I've heard a lot of people say it's not for adults, it's for kids. I suppose the plot, maybe. But like I said, with the, the amount of Easter eggs and the joy and the music, it's just so much fun that it was, it was hard not to wipe the smile from my face while I was watching this thing. It, it was just an absolute blast. The plot is... It is a, it's Mario Brothers. It's the plot, and, and you know you compare it to I think it was was it Super Mario Super Show or Super Mario Three, where he, he fixes the drain. And I was expecting him to get a call, and he fixes the drain, and and he goes down the the tub. I think it was Super Show or Mario Super Mario Three, and he goes down the maybe it was Mario World, and he goes down the tub. This one I'm expecting that to happen because they're playing it out like that's where it's going. It does not. Then they see a news a thing a, a, a news. Uh, blurb and they say Brooklyn's flooding We and they're like we gotta save Brooklyn Luigi and they go to save Brooklyn uh, the news reporter by the way is Pauline from Donkey Kong they go to save Brooklyn and and they so they go down to fix this pipe the pipe breaks they go even further down and they find this like hidden like lair almost of pipes and now I thought when they walked in there we were gonna get the Mario Brother game like the side scroll on the two player with the pow I thought that was coming it did not come and then uh, Luigi looks at it, one of the pipes, a green pipe. But they they did it. It was really nice because it wasn't clean and shiny like a Mario Brother pipe. But it was green and it was rusted like it had been sitting there for a while. And Luigi gets sucked in there. And then Mario goes to find him and he gets sucked in. And then they get separated as they go down this pipe. They get separated. And Luigi goes to the Dark World and, and, and Mario to the Mushroom Kingdom. And this movie plays... It turns the table on. It's not Princess Peach that he's rescuing. It's actually Luigi. And the reason why Luigi gets kidnapped is because he was found by the Shy Guys in Bowser's abandoned castle. And Bowser gets word that there is a plumber with a mustache that threatens him because Bowser's whole plot is to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom if Princess Peach will not marry him. That, that's the plot. Bowser wants to destroy the Mushroom Kingdom if Princess Peach does not agree to marry him. And it's up to bait. And Mario wants to, so Peach wants to save Mushroom Kingdom from from Bowser with Toad, and Mario wants to rescue his brother. And they add in every element of Super Mario Brothers from 1985 until now. Like everything is in there. You got a cat suit. You got the the leaf, the raccoon suit. You've got fire, flower power, fire, star power. Uh, small mushrooms, big mushrooms, and, Mar and Mario hates mushrooms. You get to see Mario's family also. Uh, Spike from Wrecking Crew, played by Sebastian Maniscalco, is phenomenal. I loved it. And after that scene, you get like a Wrecking Crew kind of stage going on, mixed with Mario 1. It was just like, like I said, like if you've been playing Mario Brothers since before they were super, there's so much to enjoy. And if you play them only when they were super, there's so much to enjoy. There's every little detail. They, they nailed it in this movie. And like I said, swiping the smile from my face while I watch it. Like if I was, I I I text my my cousin who has a 
uh, a young boy. And I said, he, when he watches this, he is going to black out. <laughs> like, like if you were a Mario fan in any level, like my nephew, I think my nephew is going to lose his mind watching this movie. I kind of want to, like, I want to kidnap him and go see it. I want to take him to go see it. Cause I think he's going to lose his mind. Cause this movie plays on every piece of Mario lore that you can think of. And the one question I had a couple questions going into it. One, the big one was Yoshi, because Yoshi hasn't been in the marketing. You see, like an island of Yoshi's at one point, which was awesome. Um, and then the tease at the end, the end credit tease is is Yoshi and a Yoshi egg ha- ha- hatching in Brooklyn, which is pretty pretty awesome. I don't know if it's as good a tease as a 1993 tease. That tease, if you haven't seen that tease where they pitched, it's it's a great tease. This movie was great. You get to see Baby Mario and Baby Luigi as well. They they covered everything within this. Bowser puts on the white top hat from Odyssey without the eyeballs, but the white top hat he puts on. Jack Black gets to sing a, two songs, I guess technically. He gets to have like a nice love ballad. Donkey Kong was in this way more than I expected. I don't know what I was expecting, but he was in it way more. And I wasn't sure how they were going to incorporate like Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. And all these other Mario's into it, but like I said, with Wrecking Crew, like they really did. They found a way to make it all work, and um, yeah, it just it all worked. It like it made they were like, we have to do this, and to do this, you have to do this, and to this, you're going to do this, and it just kept going. And I thought it was brilliant the way they handled it. Basically, the Mario Kart stuff is because in in the Kong Kingdom they get around with carts. <laughs> that's they're like well you need to get a cart then you see them picking their cart and it's all like the icons from mario kart it was just wild the way that that they that they did that it was phenomenal then you have chris pratt's voice everybody's like i know chris pratt his voice is terrible shove it up your butt he actually does a good job uh and you forget that it's chris pratt like five seconds into it and there is a moment a beautiful moment at the beginning of the movie when you first meet the mario brothers it has a mario song from the super mario super show and it's their plumbing commercial after that and in the commercial they have really thick fake italian very fake accents and then they're like oh and then when they watch it mario goes oh man what do you think was my voice too much and Charles Martinet plays the character and goes, no, it was a good. And like, it was spot on. Perfect. That character comes back later as well. Very well. You get to see Mario's family. Like I said, with some great voices in there, Sebastian Maniscalco as Spike. Like I said, a character that ended up coming back and didn't really do much, but came back later. Just great to see wrecking crew. And, and it's a movie that I think will probably stand the test of time as something that kids will watch often. It made me want to play Mario Brothers after. And I and it leads into a sequel. And it's one of those ones that could have a franchise. And if they wanted, if Nintendo and Illumination wanted, I guarantee you the Super Mario universe could easily be created. I think Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong, I think they are they're ripe for their own spinoff. I think the Toads probably could go. I'm a big Toad fan. Toad was phenomenal in this, by the way. Uh, my favorite character, he, he was great in this. A little underplayed towards the end. I thought he was going to come and do something towards the end, but in, instead it didn't didn't take off that way. Uh, but phenomenal. Uh, uh, all the voice acting was actually really good in it. And so the Toads could definitely have a spin-off. The Koopa Troopers, all those Koopas could have one. So I think you could really branch off and do a cinematic universe if you wanted. And then it could all come together in a Super Smash Brothers and some capacity. And I've got to say, like I said, this movie and the 1993 movie, I will be doing a comparison video because they are way too similar for their own good. I, there were little things. I mean, obviously the plot plumbers from, from Brooklyn show up in a Mushroom Kingdom, but they are aesthetic wise. No, but plot wise, a little, they're a little bit similar. Although Luigi doesn't get kidnapped in uh the first one. I thought it was great. There was Luigi's Mansion is one of my favorite games. There was reference to that. There was, you know, Dry Bones. Under I was like, the water effect, the water the animation was spectacular in this. It blew my mind. And then you have, um, what else? You got? Yeah, the underwater fish and all that. And, and Mario. Mario being Mario and 
figuring out how to be Mario and doing the trial. It was just a lot of fun to watch. It was a joy to watch as a, a lifelong Mario player and fan. As someone who loves the 1993 movie, this uh, was a perfect Mario Brother film. A perfect Mario Brother film. And I don't say that lightly. I don't. I don't say that lately because there's the 1993 one I love. It's not nowhere near a perfect Mario movie. This one was perfect on every level. It hit jokes, humor. It had stakes. It had more stakes than half the MCU movies. And it was, uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun. And, and it felt fun. It felt fun. It was bright. It was vibrant. It was Mario. It was dark, but it wasn't dark. It was Mario dark where everything's like black, but there's a spotlight on you. That that's actually that doesn't actually happen. It was just a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see it again. I have there, you know. I, I just I can't wait to sit down and watch this again and again and again. And I feel like it could be the one that I keep going back to. Like I, that's how I watch movies. It, it, it's it's a joy, a blast. Soundtrack. I hope I can find that. And and yeah, I highly I highly recommend Mario fans watching this. If you're not a Mario fan, you probably wouldn't watch it anyway. It was, I guess, an hour and a half, and it was the perfect amount of time. Perfect. Perfect amount of time. And like I said, the humor really got me. It was it was funny. And there's a lot of little, like I said, the little references in there were also very spectacular as well. I, I just can't wait to see it again. It was a blast. All right, that is my spoiler uh, review talk. I don't really review, but I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 12 out of 10, 90 out of 10, whatever you want. Perfect Mario film. That's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget, it. don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, woohoo! may you be the master of your own universe.